anti-Russia story while sucking up to a regime that's about a thousand times more evil and dangerous than Russia, and that's China. Let's discuss it now with former Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Aloha, Tulsi. Nice to see you. Aloha, Steve. You too. So what do you make of this story? <laughs> well, well, first of all, let's look at, look at what happened here. Uh, we're talking about the leak and release of classified information from our intelligence agency. I can tell you, uh, as someone who served for eight years on the Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committees, as well as as a soldier, uh, I s signed a document and I took an oath promising that I would not release any classified information that I received. Uh, if, I, if I'd gone home and talked to my husband, Abraham, about a briefing that I had, or if I tweeted information out, I would be subject to, to federal prosecution for a crime up to ten, pun, punishable with up to 10 years uh, in prison. And so the, the incident that you're talking about here is one where a crooked entity within an intelligence agency worked with the media to release information, which, by the way, was not accurate or credible, with the intent to influence our foreign policy. This is right. what, what's at stake here. And this is why it's so dangerous. You know, we're not talking about a, a whistleblower who's releasing information about corruption or, or illegal activity in our government to serve the public interest. We're talking about activists within our intelligence agencies working with the media to release classified information in order to serve a specific uh, politician, political party, or special interest. And, and worse, they're getting away with it. This is not an isolated incident. God, I'm so glad you put that so clearly because, I mean, the stakes on this story are actually much higher than, than I thought exactly. until you said what you just said. And what is the direction that they, the, 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 of the influence they wanted to put on our foreign policy? Well, when you look at, um, uh, it depends on, on whose interest they're trying to serve. So in this example, you say, okay, well, hey, they're trying to push uh, President Trump or our politicians towards, uh, quote unquote, punishing Russia for the thing that they, the information that they put out, or trying to make a, a, um, a, an argument for why the United States should keep troops in Afghanistan. But the reason or the interest of the politician may shift or change depending on, on these activists within our intelligence community. But what's at risk here is that it threatens our our democracy when you have unelected yeah. people in positions of power trying to usurp the power and responsibility that our elected leaders have uh, and and yet they're they're completely unaccountable and this is why it's so critical that we tighten our laws we prosecute those who do this to the fullest extent of the law in order to ensure institutions like our intelligence mm. intelligence agencies are neutral, are objective, and are serving the best interests of the American people and our country. It's interesting because as you talk, I'm just thinking this is of a piece with, with other examples we saw during the Trump yes. administration. I know you, you were the last person to support everything the <laughs> President Trump did, but you saw it in all sorts of policy areas where the establishment view, they, they didn't like the fact that you had a president coming in to challenge the establishment view on economic policy, trade policy, you name it. And here in foreign policy, of course, what he wanted to do was, was have a more um, reasonable relationship with Russia and focus on, on what he saw as the real threat, which is China. And they didn't like that. Which, by the way, focusing on a diplomatic, a, a reasonable relationship with Russia, the, a, a major nuclear armed country, one where we in the Russia have thousands of nuclear missiles pointed at each other that can be launched any minute that can reach our shores, any town in America in less than 30 minutes leading to nuclear holocaust. I would say trying to work in a more cooperative fashion to de-escalate tensions and walk us back from the brink of a, mm. a cold war is the most responsible thing that uh, our leaders should do, including President Biden. Well, uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see if that's the way it transpires. But you're always such a strong voice on this, and we really appreciate um, thank you. really illuminating the stakes of this story tonight. Tulsi, thank you. See you soon.